Absolutely. I missed this one last year. I don't remember what I was doing, but I missed it. So. New York. New York. Um, I was in, oh, that's right. We all were in New York, weren't we? Yeah. You missed it too. Down. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess, what's it like embarking on this edition of the Tuggy Tour with the level of expectations of all the programs and everyone that's going to be on that bus is going to have coming into this fall and winter? I guess I didn't think of it like that <laughs> because uh, we always have high expectations. Yes. So I, I just Extra I thought about it. It's, it's always a fun, refreshing time to uh, go out and travel around the state. For me, I love it because I get some dedicated time with some of our coaches that it's uninterrupted. Mm -hmm. So um, usually we can do some off-season thinking about the world <laughs> and our industry certainly has a lot to be thought about. So um, I'm looking forward to that. But I, I hadn't really thought about it in terms of that. I think there'll be excitement because right. people are fired up about yeah. what the fall and next winter will be like. So. What's the value in just getting two weeks to connect with fans that, you know, maybe not necessarily here, but like the farther reaches, the Cedar Rapids, the Dubuque, the, those kinds of places? It's really important. I mean, that's, that's Iowa, right? It's grassroots. And, you know, we started this tailgate tour, gosh, I don't even remember now, 18 years ago. It seems amazing to think it's been that long. But that was the foundation of it, was to get out and see the people in their homes. They come to us, and so this was our small opportunity to go to them. And I think it's really important, and it's set up in a way that kids and wives and grandmas and grandpas can all be there because it doesn't cost them anything to come to it. And that was all very intentional and deliberate to make it fan friendly because I believe that's what Iowa is. You mentioned uh, an interesting time for the industry. What What are your <laughs> thoughts on a world of a future, potential future world of revenue sharing? Now it's just another uh, disruption in our industry and every one of these seems insurmountable. This one might really be insurmountable, but we'll get through it. College athletics is really important to our country. 80% of all the medals won at the last Olympics were won by either current collegiate athletes or athletes that went and you know, participated in NCAA sports. So it's not gonna go away, but it's gonna look vastly different than what it has in the past and, and maybe that's good you know uh, to say today exactly what that's going to look like no one knows that you know we're all hypothesizing about how we're going to deal with this but um, we'll figure it out we always do and um, and we'll continue to you know move forward our NCAA, our NCAA athletics in a better place now than they were 10 or 20 years ago in your mind that's a great question. I got asked that earlier in the week by a different <laughs> member of the media. And, you know, I'm 59 years old, so I'm a crunch mudgeon. And so for me, I'd say no, right? But if you'd asked me that 10 years ago, there probably were people that would have said it was better 30 years ago, right? So I think you have to evolve. And if you don't evolve, you die. And I maybe don't like some of the things that our industry has become. But it's what it is, and so you have to deal with it. You got to evolve with it, and so I would say, yeah, to most people, you know, the younger generation, it is better, right? And the crunch budgets like myself maybe wished for yesteryears, but yesteryears aren't going to be here anymore. As you look ahead, I mean, if it's the 25 percent, the 30 percent, whatever it ends up being, how does that kind of affect what you guys are looking at facilities-wise two or three years down the road? Well, first of all, I, what I would say is um, it's going to be a drastic change. And that change isn't going to happen overnight. We have a $100 million budget. We don't have a $120 million budget. So if we, it's a, will be a um, um, permissive legislation or permissive ruling, which means you don't have to do it. And quite frankly, from talking to most of my peers, most of us have no idea how we will do it. So as an accountant, I can look at it and say, the only way we could do $20 million is to only spend 80. But I don't know where we'd get rid of the 20, at least overnight. That's what, well, you know, that's the million dollar question or $20 million question for all of us. And we'll figure it out. 
but you know, it's not a simple answer and it's not an answer that someone can just say, well, this is what we're going to do tomorrow. And anybody that does that is just blowing smoke at you. Yeah. town originally, I think it was earmarked kind of for the renovations around the Iowa State Center. Did, does it get to a point where maybe that helps offset some of those losses? No. I mean, town is a complete separate project. It's a university project. It is, um, you know, a very complex real estate transaction that is set up in the manner it's set up in for a good reason. The reason that we have the challenges with the Iowa State Center is as awesome as that idea was 50 years ago, no one 50 years ago thought about today. And we're not going to make that same mistake. So Sidetown is set up in a way that whoever is leading the university and the athletics department 50 years from now isn't faced with what we're faced with today. And so because of that, um, that revenue is not going to be, you know, we've made a commitment that that revenue is not going to go to faculty salaries. It's not going to athletic department salaries or student athlete salaries. It's going to make sure that that area stays vibrant and there's not a deferred maintenance issue for future generations like we inherited. Do you have to financially plan that that 20 million or whatever it is is not going to be permissive? Because I'd imagine these two gentlemen behind me are going to want to spend every dollar that they can to, to win games. Um, no, not necessarily, because you could argue today with collectives, it's permissive that you can spend whatever you want to spend, and we're clearly not doing that, because that's not who we are. And so, um, you know, I, one of the things that excites me about the new world is I think we've been kind of operating in that world already, and there's others that have just operated willy-nilly, and now they are going to even make their problems even worse. And we've already kind of established a culture that you can't argue about the success. I mean, those two gentlemen we're referencing probably have had their most success in the last three years from a recruiting standpoint during a time period when most of us would have thought we couldn't have done that, right? Because we weren't doing necessarily everything everybody else was doing. And I think what it does is it ref is a great reflection of the two of them and Coach Dresser and Coach Fenley as well that they've been able to thread the needle by having a culture that recognizes NIL, 